Hi, I'm Steve Casely from CBT Nuggets and welcome to this micro nugget on Scrum Artifacts. There are a limited number of artifacts associated with the Scrum development process, but each of these artifacts are very crucial to the overall success of good productive Scrum delivery. The key artifact is the user story, which identifies the business functionality to be delivered by the project. The user stories are combined into what we call the product backlog, which are the stories awaiting completion. As we move forward in the Scrum process, stories are removed from the product backlog and moved into a very specific sprint backlog, which identifies the stories to be completed in the next sprint, which is a defined two to four week development cycle. And finally, we track our progress in Scrum development through a series of progress charts. And the key artifact is the user story. The user story, as just mentioned, identifies the business functionality. Or in common IT terms is the requirement. The key differentiator in Scrum user stories is that the user stories are very focused, very specific pieces of requirement as evidenced by the fact that Scrum recommends each user story is written on a blank three and a half by five index card. So the, again, the concept is we can't put a lot of detail on an index card. So therefore these requirements are very, very, very specific. And try to focus the development of our user stories, we typically have a very refined, defined format. As a type of user, as a warehouse clerk, I need to do something. I need to find a product in the warehouse so that a result happens. I can ship the product to a customer. The next part of a user story is the definition of done. We will determine this user story where a warehouse clerk can find a product in the inventory so that it can be shipped to a customer. The acceptance criteria is we know where it is, i.e. a picking slip is produced. And finally, we identify the business priority. This is a high business priority, and this is a priority of eight. And we use these prioritization to pick the next most set of valuable user stories from the backlog to put into the sprint. As the user stories are produced, they're added to the product backlog. The product backlog is a visual presentation of stories often a wall in your workspace, or as I've tried, tried to draw here, is the concept of a cork board where the stories are placed. As the stories are completed, typically they will go into this area of the business story. So as we add in a new story, we would put it here. The key difference between the first identified business story and a sprint ready business story is by the time it goes over to sprint ready, every aspect of the story, all three pieces are filled in. Often all we do is put in as a warehouse clerk, we don't have the definition of done, we don't have the prioritization, and that's the differentiating between what happens in this right-hand side of my product backlog and what happens over here in the far left-hand column of Sprint Ready. It's not necessary to categorize your stories by business stories, by epics, Epics are simply very large business stories that need to be further decomposed. So one epic will break down into multiple user stories or business stories. We may have stories associated with a requirement for documentation. I need a training manual. You may have other stories associated with I need specific training or I have team stories or I have stories associated with technical debt or I have or I have. 
how you categorize your stories is going to be based on the type and nature of the project that you're working on. During the sprint planning process, stories are removed from the product backlog based on the highest priority stories, and they are moved over to the to-do to -do column of the sprint backlog, where the sprint identifies the stories that's going to be worked on in the next two to four week sprint. I like to have my sprint backlog identified with the resources as well. And just like we moved stories through the product backlog, we move stories through the sprint backlog. The story starts in the to-do, they move over to the in-progress, and as they're worked on, they moved over to the done. And by the end of the sprint, all stories will be in the done column. And finally in Scrum, to track our progress as stories move from the product backlog to the sprint backlog, and as stories move through the sprint backlog, we have a number of progress charts. We typically produce either a burn down or a burn up chart. A burn down tracks the number of stories that are in the release and how it decreases over time as most, more sprints address the stories, or the alternative is the or an up chart identifies the number of stories that are be completed. This is a to-do and this is a done view representing the same information. At a sprint level, we have the same style of charts. We can identify the work or the number of stories, but typically at a sprint level, we become a little more granular and we identify the specific work packages, the amount of individual work assignments, and we track the progress recognizing that there may be small hiccups in our work progress where some of the estimates were simply wrong and we identified more work needs to be done. And again, we can do it on a burn down or a burn up to track the progress through our sprints. This completes our discussion on the Scrum artifacts. I hope this has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.